Hey y'all, welcome to Life on Helton Creek. My name's Darcy and um, I'm back. I have been for you, for my regular viewers, my friends, I have been uh, somewhat under the weather for going on three weeks. I am beginning to get over it and get better and get out and do a little more. But, um, yeah, I've been pretty sick. Um, I appreciate the notes from a couple, that a couple, I appreciate the notes that a couple of y'all sent to me wondering where I was at and hoping we were okay. I really, that means a lot to me. And I, I just want to say thank you. We're in hay again. And all the things already the kids are back in school the farm is you know the farm is what it is we're waiting on babies we're getting ready to go shopping for a bull that'll be some um some video coming up pretty quick um we talked to the people that we got curly bill from and there's some really exciting um possibilities that they have available so today i'm just out and about checking on the girls seeing if we have any babies i've uh, been feeding the rabbits and feeding the pig and you know doing all the things while pa's out on the tractor and he's had a little bit of help i've got some footage here to show you that so i'm just getting back into the swing of things slowly but surely so i want to add this little thing to you uh to, oh look at my shirt what do you think you like it so I think this is probably gonna be my brand. I don't know. Um, I had Pa uh, Bill Cap made and it has the little ear tag on it that uh, matches this. These two guys laid this field out pretty quick. So today we're going to give you a little information about cutting hay. I know there's been some interest in how it's done and how it works. So um, what kind of cutter is this? Disc mower? This is a Kubota 2028 disc mower. It, uh, Originally, I think a Vicon design, and the boat bought the parent company, and so it's got uh, it's got three knives on each hat. Where uh, a lot of the other disc mowers have two knives on a kind of an oblong hat. So these things spin at incredibly fast speed. Out of it. <laughs> That's a technical term, right? Ma'am? That's a technical term, right? To whack the fire, whack out, the of fire out of it? So... What is this? Those are the skids. That's what it rides along the ground on. Oh, okay. And you adjust your, your angle of your cut with the top link on the tractor. And so you can make it more aggressive or less aggressive. Uh, this is a 2028, so it's a 280 centimeter, millimeter, centimeter cutter, which is nine foot four inches. And that's uh, called a curtain. Yeah, that's a curtain to keep <laughs> debris from flying everywhere. Um, mower that's on the other tractor is a 2032 so it's a 10-6 so it's about a foot foot and a half wider than a foot and a half wider mm -hmm. so that's one reason kevin got through with his section before i got through with mine i couldn't figure out how he was out running me and then i realized he had a wider <laughs> mower so because i had that feel 
pretty well marked on what an apple was. And this is what you cut today? Yeah, this is a little Johnson grass around the edges and stuff. Some pretty good fescue. This turned out to be really, really nice. Uh, got a little so, clover mixed in there. Got a little bit of clover and mostly fescue. You might find a little bit of orchard grass in there once in a while. You can kind of see out in there, it's, <clears throat> it's good fine grass. And uh, Johnson grass not up too, too thick or too rank, so it's looking pretty decent. Now, That's how all. long you've laid this down, how long will it take it to cure? Uh, I'll probably try to roll it Friday. Uh, usually, we'll, we'll let it lay for about three days. This finer stuff won't take as long, but the Johnson grass probably will. May we'll, try to tet it. We may try hurt to come it over up. it. Uh, kind of kick it up off the ground. Get that. Get that. Johnson Fluff grass. it. Fluffed. Fluff it. Make and it so, help it to cure a little quicker. Our good friend David and that other tractor. We'll see he's, him he's come back. Actually, the landowner for this yeah. field over here, and he has semi-retired and wanted some seat time. So I said, well, I can accommodate seat time. We, so. we appreciate seat time, don't we, Paul? Yeah. Seat time can be very, very important. So to Tyler's, Tyler's going to get make another fuel run. We top, topped them off. and so. Seat time can be very important for your mental health. Oh, yeah. Definitely a kicked up lawnmower, ain't it? That's David getting him a little seat time. Mowing a little hay. I think he's a viewer of the channel. In the back of the truck, you'll see a diesel box. You fill that up and then bring it to the tractors and you don't have to put a bunch of miles and time in on the tractors to fuel them up. So it's a handy thing to have. Tyler's a pretty handy thing to have too. So in my email, I have had a couple of people message me and ask me why at the end of my videos, I say, remember you're never alone. And this could be a video all on its own, but I'm not sure how, um, I'm not sure how it would be accepted on this channel. The main thing I wanted to talk to you about was 1-800-273-8255, 1-800-273-TALK, T-A-L-K. That is the crisis line. Um, and this crisis line is for suicide prevention, uh, support of those who may have lost someone, support for those who may be thinking about it, it is a crisis intervention line. I like to bring that out in the open. I'm always amazed at the people that don't know about this number. But there's in July, there was a big change to this number. And instead of having, I've always said, write it down, put it in your purse, put it in your glove compartment, put it in your sun visor, in your vehicle, anywhere, put it where you can get to it. And you, because you never know. Uh, if a friend or a family member is going to need that information. So I've always said, you know, keep it handy. And in July of this year, the National Crisis Hotline was changed. You can still call the 1-800 number, and that will be in service for quite a while. They're, they're not taking it out or anything like that. But the new number is so much easier to remember so much easier to share and you can it's 988 just dial 988 that's it 
So you can share it with a friend who's struggling if you're struggling. Uh, and maybe you're not in necessarily in crisis yourself, but you have a family member in crisis or a friend in crisis and you need help and support and you need to know uh, how you can help them. This subject is very near and dear to our family. We, we all try to work diligently in support of anything suicide prevention and it's because it's touched our family. Uh, it's touched so many families, uh, but there's such a stigma to mental health. There's such a stigma to uh, people who need help. They're either ashamed to ask for it or ashamed to talk about it, or, or maybe shame is not it. Maybe they just don't know how to address it. So that's why I like to share this information a lot. Um, with anybody that's interested in hearing it, it's just important to our family for you to know that you are never alone. There's always somebody there to help you. This crisis line is 24 7 365. So uh, there's, there's a lot of websites out there that have a ton of information. Nine eight eight is not only the phone number, but there's also a nine eight eight lifeline dot org. Nine eight eight lifeline dot org. You can text with them, you can chat online with them, you can call and speak with them. I know a lot of people don't want to say out loud, but they'll text all day. So you can text that number as well. It's just such a huge benefit and such a such a great change in the ease of getting help or support or knowledge. For me, um, you know, January the 15th, 2005, I lost my brother. He died by suicide on the third anniversary of our father's death. Uh, this is something that I struggle with, my family struggles with, my husband and my kids. You know, we still um, and struggle may not be the right word. It rocked our world, y'all. It, it just rocked our world. And it took a long time to get over it. And and I, I would say we're not over it. Uh, we have learned to live with it. But it, it rocked our world. A year later, on March the 3rd, 2006, uh, my mother-in-law, Pa's mom, uh, died by suicide. So, it, it has touched us closely. You know, you may think that, you may think there's just nothing left for you, but I got, I got news for you, baby. You are wrong. There is somebody out there who will, who will do anything they can to help you or to get you help or to show you the way to get help. So that is the purpose of my you're never alone because you're not ever alone. I, I don't mean to bring anybody down and I don't want anybody feeling sorry for me or anything like that. I just want you to understand that it is important for people to know that they are loved. It is important for you to hug your people and to love your people and to not let those teeny tiny things come between you. Um, what seems like a huge mountain is, you know, a pebble in the water. So, I could preach on and on, y'all. I could just talk about it all day. Um, but I I'm going to cut it out now and let you know. Just 988. 988. 988lifeline.org. AFSP.org. Uh, Jason's Foundation works with youth. They send a lot of publications and a lot of information out to teachers and counselors at school and work with schools a lot. And the gentleman that started it lost his son at a young age. And this is how, uh, this is how he keeps Jason alive. He started Jason's foundation. And just remember y'all, you're never alone. Thank you so much for joining us. I hope you stayed till the end to hear my little chatter um, I hope I didn't offend anybody or trigger anybody or anything like that. I'm just trying to put the word out for you guys to share. And y'all join us again 
we're gonna start picking up content again now that I'm feeling better. So anyway, you guys be blessed. Thank you for joining us at Life on Helton Creek. Bye-bye.